Okay, so we're uh, speaking with uh, Dr. Tina Peterson. Ooh, I love the sound of that. PhD in Mass Media and Communication from Temple University. Uh, Tina, can you tell us a little bit about your uh, research and scholarly interests? Well, my research is primarily about uh, what I am calling food media literacy. It's uh, whether, basically, the, the capacity for people to critically evaluate food media to detect whether or not it has been edited, stylized, uh, highly produced, uh, manipulated essentially, and whether or not they can, whether or not they can see past all of the sort of food network glitz and glam and actually access instructional content within that media. So why is food media literacy important? I think it's important because we are surrounded with food messages almost everywhere we look. Um, we only eat three times a day, some of us maybe a little bit more, um, but we see food just everywhere. We see messages about it, we see advertising, we see television shows about food. Um, the Food Network became so popular that they couldn't, even, they couldn't even handle all the viewers that they already had. They had to spin off the cooking channel. So now we have two major networks devoted to food programming. We have food programming on other channels as well. And we have an exploding market of cookbooks and food magazines, food blogs, food podcasts. And a lot of that food media is actually, it's not... It doesn't exactly have our best interests at heart or the public health public health at heart, essentially. A lot of it is encouraging us to just eat more, more, more of the things that make the most money for these companies, um, but it's not necessarily healthy for us. My dissertation is Seeing, Believing, and Cooking, Food Media Literacy, Meaning Making, and Self-Efficacy. And um, my dissertation is essentially a study of perceptions of food media. It, um, it was an experiment involving uh, 94 adult female subjects here in Philadelphia and in uh, central Pennsylvania in which women looked at uh, instructional food texts that, which were illustrated with a variety of different photos and basically I measured their reactions to these texts, their responses to them and then I asked them, asked them a number of other questions about how much cooking experience they have, what kind of experience they have using um, digital imaging technology such as Photoshop, red eye correction, uh, digital cameras, that sort of thing. Um, a, number of, a number of different intervening variables, including their food media literacy. I asked them 24 questions about a number of media literacy related items. And uh, then I analyzed the statistics, or I, I did the statistical tests on the data, and um, I found a number of interesting things. I think the most, the most important of which, in my opinion, is that women, the women that I spoke with, did not, do not necessarily perceive food media to be, um, to be sort of feature entertainment. I think they tend to see it as more of a documentary. They tend to possibly see it as a sort of unedited window on just people cooking. And that's so not what it is. You know, when you watch Martha Stewart make something on camera, she has minions, she has probably 20 assistants who might not even be getting paid all that much, who do all of the dirty work for her. And if she takes 45 minutes to make something, which is reasonable, they'll edit it down to 30 minutes or 22 minutes with the commercials. So when you watch her make something, you tend to maybe think, wow, I should be able to do this in 22 minutes and it should be as easy as Martha Stewart does it. And when you can't do that, because guess what, she can't either, it, it might be kind of disappointing. You might want to just throw everything into the sink and give up.